These are 15 essential tools I use to run my YouTube automation business. With them, you can do things like this. Without them, let's get into it. Test, test. Good to go. Notion is my home for everything. And overall, it's probably the most important tool because while we were building and scaling this business, it's incredibly important that we have a central hub for onboarding staff and freelancers, for scripting video ideas, and for kind of talking about the overall structure and process. <laughs> Heck, I'm even using Notion to script this video right now. And it's incredibly important for YouTube automation specifically because look, there are a lot of moving parts. And you can design pages specifically for the process and update them so everybody knows knows what stage each project is at. People generally seem to like our Notion setup when we pop it up here, so if you do want me to do a full video on how we run our YouTube automation business on Notion, do let us know down below. But look, it's free to use, and unless you want to start bringing on team members to Notion, which you know you really don't kind of need, it will remain free. So overall, it's a pretty good deal. The next tool we have is Frame.io, which is my save and grace. You see, when we run a business like this, you're working with a lot of freelancers, especially editors, animators, and designers. And if you were to give feedback on their work using the likes of Apple Notes, you, you'd be there forever. I know this because I used to do it, and that was until a friend introduced me to Frame and my mind was blown. Frame is like a central hub where you can share video feedback and streamline your workflow so everybody can work together asynchronously. You know, I don't like this image on screen, leave a comment on Frame and take it out. Bob's your uncle. I've been using Frame for over five years, not just in my YouTube business, but every other business I've ever ran that involves some bit of video production. And we've never looked back. Right now we're paying $15 a month. And considering the amount of time I save and we save every month, it's worth every penny. I'll add up all the money that we're spending and reveal it at the end, like some very big reveal. The next tool has yielded me the highest ROI of every tool on this list. Personally, I think it's quite dangerous to build an audience solely on a platform like YouTube because you don't own it. I'm basically like renting <laughs> you. And I don't want to rent you. I want to own you. Sorry. The best way to own an audience is through like an email list and the best email list and email general tool that I've ever used is ConvertKit. Apart from crashing a couple of startups, I've been lucky enough to build and sell a couple of startups and I can hand on my heart say that without ConvertKit, that mightn't have happened. You can do so much with this tool. You can create landing pages, build email sequences, monetize digital products, and they keep adding more and more features every time I go onto the platform. So yeah, damn straight, I'm using this tool again with my YouTube automation business to capture audience emails for various different niches. Because then I have the option to monetize it in more ways than just AdSense revenue. We're subscribed to the creator plan right now, which is $9 per Month. Now it's worth knowing the price does increase as you get more subscribers on your email list, but you know, these are really good problems to have. With YouTube automation, you're working with a lot of people and freelancers and trying to coordinate your team using something like WhatsApp is like trying to coordinate a trip abroad using carrier pigeons. While it's technically possible, that's why we use Slack. We more or less use it for all of our communication. We have different channels for different aspects of the business. So now messages for a video title doesn't get intertwined with messages for a thumbnail. Bloody great tool. Right now it's free for us and we'll probably end up paying eventually just to access some of the premium features. But right now we want to squeeze as much juice as we can from this orange before we start paying you know, premium price for this baby. Next up we have Discord. And Discord is where I learn. YouTube is where I drop the L. Sorry, that was horrible. Look, surrounding yourself both physically and digitally with people that are more advanced than you and the topic can only, you know, make you better at that topic. And I'm in a couple of communities on Discord that have some serious players in this YouTube automation game. My personal favorite community on Discord is called the Investor's Kitchen and Wano, the guy who runs the Investor's Kitchen, has over 10 years of YouTube automation experiences and every day he starts posting access to all of his notes, findings, experiments, and he answers questions for all of the community. It's $63 a month and personally it's the best money that I spend because if you're not willing to invest in getting better at something, Thing. What's the point in doing it? Now, when it comes to stock footage, you can probably use a free tool like Pixels, but you're gonna end up with footage like this, which let's be honest, they're about as genuine as a vegan doing a barbecue. Fun fact, did you know when I was younger, I actually couldn't say the word barbecue. Really? Yeah, a very bad stutter, barbecue. 
little victories. Now, if you are taking this seriously, it is worth investing in a tool like Storyblocks. It just gives our editors much more to work with and allows them to create better videos using better videos. It works out at about $36 a month, which is relatively expensive. However, if you consider your editor might charge you $25 an hour, all you need to do is save them like an hour and a half a month, then you've made your money back. Motion Array for us is kind of like getting bottle service at a club. It's completely unnecessary, but it makes you look good. Oh, and we use it to give our videos some, you know, shabazz, some identity. Now they also have stock footage too, which we do dip into every so often. This tool is more of a nice to have. It costs us $29 a month. Now Epidemic Sound is not a nice to have, it's a must have. It's a library of royalty free music that you can pick and choose for your content. And it's great because you have a lot of tracks to choose from and you don't have to worry about getting a copyright strike. One feature I really like using is to find similar tracks. So if I like a song and I want to see a song that's similar to it, I can just click on this button and find a song that kind of you know, resembles it. It's $12 a month, cannot go wrong. It's a must have. Now this might be a bit obvious in this day and age, but ChatGPT is incredibly useful for us. Let me be very specific on how we use it. We find it useful for four main things. Creating better titles using prompts like this. Helping rephrase certain elements of the script and making it more digestible. By the way, that Hemingway prompt is absolutely great. You can word things according to a grade school reading ability. It's great for making your language a little bit more digestible when you're not good with your words, like I am. And the third thing we use it for is asking it to come up with analogies for certain situations. We pay $25 a month for the premium service, which is probably overkill, but it does guarantee us access to ChatGPT4, which is worth it. Kara's gone, traveling Australia in a van right now, hence me filming outside. 11 Labs is an AI text-to-speech tool that we've been using for one of our channels. And in terms of voice synthesizing, it's by a mile the best tool on the market. Especially when it comes to voice cloning, that's the main reason we use it. Instead of paying a guy on Fiverr to do a Donald Trump impression, we can just train a voice on 11 Labs and get them to do it for us. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty cool tool. We paid $22 a month for it. Canva is ideal if you're new to design. It's so user-friendly and very intuitive. The pre-designed templates are really useful, but the main thing that I use it for is creating thumbnails, icons, removing backgrounds from images, and even using its mock-up features to display something on my phone, which is really quite a cool tool. It's $12.99 per month, and for me, it's worth every penny. Now, one downside to Canva is that it only gets you so far when it comes to design. It lacks in some cases, you know, you can't distort images or tweak some colors, but with the next tool, you can, and it's the golden oldie of the group, Photoshop. Photoshop can do pretty much anything. If you haven't used it before, it is a little bit weird to get started, so it will take you a bit of time to get over that hump, but you can use it to do some really cool designs for thumbnails or icons or, you know, whatever the hell you want. $22 a month. It's a must have. The key to a successful YouTube automation business is freelancers. Cheap freelancers are not good, and good freelancers are not cheap. And where I go to find my freelancers is Upwork, especially if I know I'm gonna be working with this person for a long period of time. It works by putting up a job post and then you have people apply for it. And at the end of every job post that I put up personally, I put a line at the bottom of the message asking them to start their reply with a hashtag because it shows that they've actually read the job post and they're just not another bot trying to apply for another job. Now the pay range is from various projects here, but generally you can find somebody to do the job you want for the price that you're willing to pay. It's free to use and to put up a job post, but if you do hire someone, it does cost a finder's fee and a small service fee on top of that. But what I generally do after the first job is I just take it off of Upwork and I just start paying them directly myself. Fiverr acts a little bit differently to Upwork. I use Fiverr if I have a specific job to do, like creating an animated version of a celebrity or give my mom a birthday wish from the African Tiger team. Well, there's this year's present sorted. I spend thousands of euro on Fiverr and I'm gonna spend thousands of euro more because it's incredibly convenient, especially if you need jobs done in a short space of time. Fiverr charges a really small fee when you use it, but to be honest, for me, it's worth it for the convenience. And it's only a couple of dollars and it's quite irregular, so I'm not gonna include this in the overall fees. The final tool we use is YouTube Studio. Personally, this is actually the tool I probably spend the most time on. It's really good for analyzing the performance of videos, and in my opinion, it's way better than TubeBuddy and Video. IQ. You see firsthand what insights you have on your channel as a whole and on video specific elements like click-through rate, average view duration. Say hello to the 
man with a dog behind me. <laughs> it can be quite overwhelming at the start, but when you do get used to it and you find that one or two key metrics that you like to analyze the performance of how your video or how your channel is doing, then it's so bloody useful. So that brings our total subscription cost every single month, which when you break it down is substantial enough, but the idea here is that your business generates 10, 20, 30 times that amount. And those tools help you with that. Now we haven't included staff costs in this calculation, but starting to become profitable in this field quite quickly is absolutely possible if you know what you're doing. Now it will take a little bit of fuel to get the plane off the ground. Yes, I did use ChatGPT for that analogy, but when you do get up in the air, it's worth it. If you wanna see how I got my plane off the ground, check out this video up here.